Over the years, I've played many an MMO. Hell, the first video game I ever played was EverQuest. Mm. Running around in Freeport bodying the local pest population due to being disallowed to go out and fight real folk because of my four-year-old walnut-sized brain being I unable understand. to grasp the delicate art of combat. And not to mention that having to help your four-year-old child figure out how to get their equipment back from where they'd previously fallen, without letting them give permission to some rando to pilfer it all with nary a consequence to make a quick buck probably isn't an entertaining task while having to deal with your own raid scuttling back to where you've been slaughtered before. I can never remember if it was the Pest of Freeport or the Pest of Kanos, but it was one of the two. I see what you did there, Sony. So anyway, back on the topic of MMOs, I've played many. EverQuest to start, World of Warcraft to replace, and RuneScape to supplement. My experience stretches through these to even replacements I've tried to get away from World of Warcraft, Allods Online, and even visual knockoffs, Rift. Even experiencing the wonder that was Fly for Fun, Sherwood for some reason, Gaia Online, some legends I can't quite recall the names of, and awful ones unfortunately I do remember the names of. Today, dear viewer, I wanted to talk about some things that World of Warcraft lacks compared to other MMOs and what I think would be fun for them to add. What's up, Wablings, and welcome back to a brand new video. One day, I was walking about doing my daily round of world quests in Nazjatar, and I came across one that, for lack of an angelic tongue to describe its holy wonder, my mortal mouth will profess it was the best thing I'd ever experienced in an MMO, far above anything I'd seen before. Day in, day out, whilst grinding for my Pathfinder achievements to fly and battle for Azeroth, I had managed to do a world quest many times, somehow completely unaware of the blissful joy I was experiencing the whole time. For some reason, one time it randomly hit me. I fell back into my chair in awe at what had gone unnoticed for so long, this wonderful quest. That quest made me think about how much World of Warcraft has to offer compared to other MMOs. What was that quest? I'm sure is a question that, if I still have your attention, is surely on your mind. We will come back to that shortly, but for now I'd like to take you on a short journey through some other MMOs so you can truly appreciate with me what World of Warcraft has to offer compared to its competition. World of Warcraft came out in 2004 in a state which you can experience even still in the form of World of Warcraft Classic. Fortunately, as the retail game has aged, it has changed with time so as to reflect some more modern practices and to keep with pace of graphics coming with games around it. So let's compare World of Warcraft to some other MMOs, shall we? I have a list of five things I'd like to see come to World of Warcraft from other MMOs. Full disclosure, I only played these games for about a whole day, but trust me that's more than enough time that is necessary to compare them properly when I've played World of Warcraft for 15 years and haven't raided Mythic once. Starting us off, let's look at player character customization. In some games, you only get one character to play with, like RuneScape. In others, you get to create a small character list that can visit the various servers the game has to offer, like Black Desert Online. And in World of Warcraft, you get to create a list of characters to pick from for each server, with a limit of 50 characters on the account total. Once you create a character and get into customization for World of Warcraft, you pick one of several races and pick whether you'd like to be male or female, then you get several features of the character you can customize. For instance, here with Night Elves, you can customize the skin color, face texture, hairstyle, hair color, and markings on their face. If you pick the Demon Hunter class, you can also customize tattoos from style and color. You can also customize the horn style and the type of blindfold you have. For each of these customization options, you have a set of predefined, fine-tuned choices. Custom-made hairstyles for the race and gender you chose, customized skin color textures for your race, etc. These are all carefully crafted for the race and gender you've chosen. They are concretely the designs Blizzard has chosen for you to have access to, to realize your vision of a character. This is alright, as it's better than some games which restrict, for instance, your gender or race based on class. They're expanding on this even more in Shadowlands, and that is still rolling out in the alpha, so character customizations may improve drastically so even more from now to the release of Shadowlands. For instance, some huge changes that excite me are for the Worgen race being able to customize your human form separate from your Worgen form, or the various races being able to customize their eye color separate from their face texture, or druids in particular being able to customize their various druid forms in character customization. This is a set of features coming that many players, myself obviously included as I suggested before, are excited for and have felt is long overdue. While the dropdowns are good and ultimately help World of Warcraft maintain a much more strict and consistent art style, some games have taken customization of characters a few hundred steps further. Some games choose to allow you to customize everything on your character down to the physical shape of their face, their hair, and even their body parts. In Black Desert Online, you can even change the size of the hair and the curls therein. With this, you can come up with a much more specific realization of a character than you might be able to with just dropdowns. That said, you can also make some absolutely ridiculous looking things that could detract from the game's visual cohesion which I might imagine Blizzard may want to avoid. But Transmog is in the game, and Blizzard doesn't have a track record of properly engaging with what players want, so 
that's a kind of moot point. This may seem unfair to compare a game's customization from 6 years ago in 2014 to 16 years ago, 2004, but bear in mind that Star Trek Online had customization like this in 2010, which is 6 years after the original release of World of Warcraft. I don't know if we'll ever get anything like this in World of Warcraft, but it would be absolutely wonderful to see. Even if it were just like the relatively simple sliders that you get in Star Trek Online compared to Black Desert Online. That would be more than adequate. This would take an immense deal of effort on the developer's side to modify the customization into something like what Black Desert Online or Star Trek Online have. So let's talk about a little bit of a step down from that. Voice acting. Man oh man have I never realized how huge a difference voice acting makes on an MMO prior to trying Elder Scrolls Online. Same night. Wait a minute, let me do that one again. I heard the thieves- I've actually been trained so much by Blizzard to understand that voice acting actually means main story quest, to the point that playing these other games was kind of disorienting because when I heard voice acting everywhere, I had incorrectly assumed that what was voice acted was actually main story content. In Elder Scrolls Online, nearly every meaningful interaction you have with NPCs is voice acted, at least to a degree. As time has gone by, they've added more and more voice acting to current quests in World of Warcraft, like what we see in Legion and Battle for Azeroth. Talia. Prepare a full briefing for our guests. And what's to come in Shadowlands. But the rest of the old world feels lacking, it feels a bit empty. When you're in the midst of following a story and have to stop what you're doing to read a quest log, it can be a bit jarring and break any immersion you may be building. Some add-ons can kind of remedy this a bit, but they don't solve the problem entirely. A few years back there was an initiative by an add-on development team to remedy this entirely, providing full narration and voice acting through an add-on. But Blizzard didn't allow that, sending them a DMCA. Well, it's been three years and old world content hasn't really been changed since. Instead, they're adding a new starter zone in the next expansion, which has a curated story which will likely be voice acted properly. I like this idea a little bit because it gives a properly digestible introduction to the game to new players, but I don't like how much it essentially abandons the old game that's been there for years and at this point, almost decades. I don't think we'll get a proper upgrade to the old world since Shadowlands is almost trying to pretend the old world doesn't exist now, sadly, so I wish Blizzard wouldn't stamp out efforts by people in its communities to try and improve the game. But that's just my thoughts. Anyhow, moving on, I want to talk about a feature which was brought to World of Warcraft in 2017, which is World Quests. Holy f hmm. World Quests were a breath of fresh air to World of Warcraft when they were added in, and were surprisingly to me one of my favorite features of Legion. Granted, I didn't do enough of them to want to beat my head into the wall like some may have, but still, they were an insanely awesome feature to come to the game. They were semi-randomized quests which would just pop up on the map and announce themselves, telling you what you could do for the zone they were in for the day. This is a great example of something that adds to a living or active world in an MMO. Because of this and the way that Legion Invasions felt, the world of Warcraft felt a little more like a living, breathing world and that was just fantastic. That's exactly why they were left the exact same in Battle for Azeroth. Nothing needed changing. Nope. Nothing. In Najatar, they changed this approach a little bit by having events in the zone change world quests you receive. Whether that be player versus player events or Naga forces building strength in player versus environment events. This was great, but kind of fell flat when the zone became dead after everyone got everything they needed from Najatar though. But that and balancing it is beside my point. This is reminiscent of older features they had in the game, like certain content being available or unavailable depending on whether or not your faction had taken control of it from the opposing one. When playing Guild Wars 2 I wasn't able to access a certain area because bees were attacking. Bees! But when we got there to actually check it out, other players had actually cleared out that problem. There's that, and when I went to the Char starting area, which... Char are like these furry cat things with horns. I was looking around at different content and found myself in the area I was in suddenly attacked by a wayward clan of Char known as the Flame Legion. It was an unusual experience seeing things just actively happen around me in Guild Wars 2 when I'm so used to the consistency I've come to expect from World of Warcraft. This was the starting area for one of the playable races. We see this kind of thing going on for World of Warcraft expansion pre-patch events, and a little bit with invasions from Legion and Battle for Azeroth. As I mentioned above, Najatar is where the idea has been used most recently. I'd love to see more living world content from World of Warcraft going forward, especially if it can be added to existing zones instead of just newer content areas. Anyway, keeping up with Guild Wars 2, we have armor die. Like, you get various dyes which you can use to change the colors of individual parts of each of your armor pieces. It also has transmog like World of Warcraft, which I use for recording this bit. I didn't commit it because apparently it costs four dollars. Anyway, you can dye your armor all kinds of different colors, which is awesome. I'd like to see something like this in World of Warcraft someday. Obviously, this is a long dead horse I'm bringing back to beat once more, but oh well. If EverQuest from 1999 can do it, Blizzard, so can you. In the past, Blizzard has said they don't want to do this because they want to maintain a consistent artistic vision with the armor sets they have in game. I couldn't find the video of them saying this, but it was in one of the various Q&As they had during BlizzCon 2018. They said they tried making some of the textures work for this in Burning Crusade, making the original textures black and white so as to be able to take colors well. But it turned out ugly so they never implemented it fully. 
I think it'd be good for them to do something kind of like what you see with Guild Wars 2 where you have a strict set of colors you can pick from that don't destroy the original textures too much but still let you make it whatever color you like. There's tons of upsides to this to go around. It would add more to player freedom. If you can connect this to a profession, this could easily add a ton to the in-game economy. Hey, people may even want to just buy WoW tokens just to be able to buy dyes. I don't know. Additionally, some could be locked to achievement-worthy activities in the game. While I'd prefer against this, Blizzard could even make a few crazy-looking color palettes and add them to the microtransaction store. And with detracting from the art style being the primary concern, again, I refer uh -huh. you to the ability to transmog. Also related to that, you could have it so that you unlock a base appearance of various armor pieces and unlock dies for those individual pieces of gear, so you could, for instance, get the raid finder version of a piece of gear, then you have to do the normal version of the raid that drops from to unlock the normal version die option. Then maybe you could require certain die options be unlocked prior to being able to use any of the other dies on the armor. I mean, there's so many ways you could go about this. Anyway, 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 what quest inspired this video? I'll answer that by talking about one other thing in Guild Wars 2 which would be stupid easy to implement in World of Warcraft. Then I'll compare that to the quest which added a feature that a lot of people seem to love to death and I, for the life of me, cannot seem to understand why. That last feature, or rather two features that kind of go hand in hand with each other, are called Vistas and Jump Puzzles. Obviously, Blizzard could call them something else in their game, but that's what they're called in Guild Wars 2. Vistas in Guild Wars 2 are kind of like the feature in World of Warcraft for discovering an area. Blizzard has talked for several years now about how they don't allow flying in new expansions initially because they want to encourage exploration. Guild Wars 2 is a game that has a lot more focus on exploration, so it's definitely a place to take inspiration from. There's five key differences between Vistas and the Discovery regions in World of Warcraft. I'm not really sure what to call them. I'll try to go about them in an order which fits most to your process of discovering them. To start, on loading screens and maps for regions, you straight up have a tracker for how many of the available vistas are still needed to complete the region. And related to that, the game straight up tells you on the map exactly where to go for them, so you don't have to look around for it and you don't have to mess with any third party websites to figure it out. You can mouse over its icon in the legend on the map and they just shine for you. Find the one you want to go to and head there for it. For instance, for this one, I find my way to the area it's in, I open my map and I can see it's at the end of this large brown pipe. Upon finding this vista, I notice it's not just out in the open where you can just waltz up upon it. You typically can't just accidentally visit a vista. You will, however, notice them while playing normally due to this ray of light cast down over it, which will make you want to explore it. Once I realize where it is, I actually have to find out how to get to it. Different vistas have different levels of difficulty to visit them. This is a starter area, so this one is not going to be hard. I can just run up this hill, get onto the pipe, and then run to the end. Once I get to this point, there's a real sense of accomplishment for having done so. Maybe not a huge accomplishment, but there's some. And this increases as you play the game because later vistas are harder to visit. Once I get to the vista, I can then interact with it. When I do this, it will show off the local area with a simple camera movement. It's a small touch, but it adds such a cinematic feel to the playing experience. Anytime I wish to see this again in the future, I can always revisit this vista and interact with it again. Now that I've interacted with it, I have one vista ticked off my list for this region. And I know exactly how many more I need and how to get them. Vistas relate to another thing which Guild Wars 2 has to offer that is probably one of the coolest things I've experienced in my limited playtime. Throughout the game world, there are jump puzzles which essentially are like a few of the rare treasures you find in World of Warcraft that are past a bit of a difficult navigation attempt to get to. The way the vistas relate is by the fact that some vistas will reveal jump puzzles. For instance, when my friend and I make our way up this mountainside, there's a bit of a challenge of a jump to get up to a vista which is up top. When we interact with it, the camera pans over a bit to reveal a vertical cave shaped like a mouth. This is a jump puzzle. After visiting this vista, we can jump down into the cave. Then we have to find our way out. In this particular instance, there's a ghost pirate narrator which explains what is expected of you and we can follow that ghost pirate's spirit. Video for this part might not be the best due to light level, but bear with me. The ghost guide navigates a little maze in an area, including parts where you have to go through the wall actually. After a maze is another area where you have to tactfully jump to get to a certain place, followed by some stairs. And then finally a hallway with some traps. I did not even slightly try to be careful when going through this area and I paid the price for it, but ideally you'd want to avoid the traps. Anyway, following a gauntlet of traps that annihilated me for being careless, we have more jumps. Really exploring this whole cave. Up next is the second to last challenge where the cave was lit for part of the time and pitch black for the other part. While it is dark you have to jump between stationary platforms to get to an endpoint. After this we were given three exits to take and told by the ghost that two led to certain death but the last leads to treasure. We took the right one which looked like the entrance to the cave as that's the correct one. Following this we got our loot reward. While this is a very custom tailored experience it didn't have to be. Looking at adding this to World of Warcraft there's plenty of areas in the game which you can only get to if you finesse your way with goofy jumping tactics. All they would have to do is reward players for creativity and regions like this, or add puzzles like this to their consideration when crafting new terrain or buildings, and it would add an extreme amount of engaging, enjoyable exploration to the game. But alas, that glorious quest in Najatar, 
who needs extensive character customization, extended voice acting, even if community driven, living world mechanics, viable armor, who needs vistas and jump puzzles when in World of Warcraft you've got motherfucking bejeweled that you are paying $15 a month to play. Alright, I know that we're probably not going to get any of these, but Blizzard, if you're somehow watching this, please give us something like Vistas at the very, very least. It's so engaging and it's so much more enjoyable than having to go to Wowhead for the exploration achievement. Just to go to the comments to copy a macro which will add waypoints with an add-on that isn't even a part of the main game. So you can go to the various points mindlessly just to mark off an achievement. This would be so very appreciated. It's so little effort compared to the rest on the list, but would add a huge amount of enjoyment to the game. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Also, I wanted to say sorry for having this video out a little late when I said it would be out on Friday, June 19th. I was part way through making the video and was trying to make it more of a satire poking fun at World of Warcraft, and I just realized that most of the script sounded like needless bitching. So here's a video instead just being frank, letting you know what I'd like to see in World of Warcraft. Also, this is era at a later time while I'm editing, and I wanted to point out I put a lot more effort into humor in this video as opposed to sidelining it like I normally do, so I apologize if that put any of you off. But if you actually enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback on it. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like below and a comment letting me know what you thought of it. Do you agree with any of these or are there other things that you might want to see in the game? Let me know. If you loved the video, maybe consider getting subscribed and if you do, hit the bell to stay notified of future uploads. Only 2.9% of people watching my videos are subscribed, so if you like the content, this would be a great way to help me out. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. No questions asked. Also, if you like what I do and you'd like to support the work, you can consider grabbing a channel or Patreon membership below. Links for this can be found in the top right of the video or in the description of the video. You can be one of the awesome people supporting the channel like our newest patron. I'd like to give a shout out and thank you to the Light Knight who has joined the Arcus tier. Anyway, that said, thank you so very much for watching. This has been your Wavelord. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.